Hey y'all, what's up, what's up? My first video in my new place. See the walls are purple for royalty. But I wanted to come on here because I just watched another um, Phyllis Hyman. Um, somebody covered her story. Um, Karen Allude, if y'all want to. Go check out her channel. Um, she be covering a lot of stars and talking about some of the things that um, if you don't feel like researching, because a lot of her stuff you can just research um, for yourself. But she puts it together really well. Her name is Karen Allude, L A L O U D E. That's the channel. And um, Um, if y'all didn't watch my early, some of my earlier videos, I um, have covered how uh, Phyllis Hyman is a relative of mine on my dad's side, and her story always touches me. <laughs> it's about to make me cry because um, she struggled with a lot of the same things that I struggle with, and that's how. I, I know it's like a generational um, curse, not for every single hymen, but I think some of us, um, I don't know how it affects some and not others, I don't know, but when I looked at my family history on, um, well, I'm having a brain fart, that's because I'm, I'm getting, when I get emotional, and I don't want to talk about my feelings because um, I don't be wanting to cry all the time. Then I get brain farts. But um, on Ancestry, I noticed that uh, the women died alone. Like they weren't married. A lot of my maternal, uh, 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 this is my father's side, the, the women, hymens, suffer from the like the lack of and Phyllis committed suicide and I told y'all if you watch my videos that that was something that I did in a past life um I pulled my cards on it and that's what I saw um so I know we have a history of it I'm not sure how Every woman hymen died, but I did see that. And they weren't all up in age either. A lot of them died pretty young. And I'm saying young, between 40 and 50. Um, and supposedly, she committed suicide. And I, 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 I struggle with believing that story because it's industry. And when you're in the industry, you can't really believe everything that they tell you. So, is it possible? Yes, because our family has a history of it. Um, one of my sisters tried to commit suicide on sleeping pills. Um, I, myself, have taken sleeping pills in excess just because I didn't want to think about heartbreak or... Um, I'm trying, I'm trying not to get emotional, y'all, because um, people be all in the comments acting a whole fool. But um, that's she overdosed, Phyllis overdosed on sleeping pills and um, vodka, according to the story. Um, I'm currently taking sleeping pills uh, because my mind doesn't allow me to sleep like I've done now I've done all types of medicate uh, medications meditation <laughs> not medications y'all I, 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 I used to be on um, Tylenol and Advil PM since I was 14 years old and I would take them in excess of four to six um, sometimes eight um, so I, this is, this is generational, this is a, a generational curse and I've done the meditations, I've done so many <laughs> meditations to clear 
that demon because a lot of the demons that she suffered from are some that I suffer from and other members of my family has suffered from. Um, and right now, I would have to ask my dad because he's the elder that, that I know that I talk to. But as of right now, none of my aunts are married. One of them is, um, she's a lesbian. Which I think she's bi because when when she was raising us, she uh, had a man, <laughs> and Phyllis Hyman was reportedly uh, bisexual as well. Um, I choose not to really um, get into that. I'm not uh, judging or anything like that. It's just um, it's something uh, I've struggled with as well, my sexuality. So. Um, Anyway, getting off topic, I, um, it's, it's, it touches me because I, it's, it's a fight, it's a constant fight, um, I've been off of marijuana for 30 days as of yesterday, because I'm, I don't want to be dependent on something that suppresses my emotions. Um, I still take the sleeping pills because my mind won't let me rest. Um, I listen to binary beats at night. I don't care how much work and, and stuff I do throughout the day, I still can't go to sleep at night. So um, I be moving to a more quieter area. Um, I'm hoping that eventually I can get off of it because um, it, it causes me to eat a lot. It's, um, I've gained some weight, so one of the side effects of taking the sleeping meds that I take is it increases your appetite. So with me getting off smoking and taking the sleeping pills, it, it increases my appetite like tenfold. So I'm like always hungry. Um, one other thing I wanted to cover is, I, I, um, in her video, Karen's video, um, I don't know what article or, or what she read this about that Phyllis would self-sabotage um, her relationships. And the Hyman family is highly intuitive. Like, we're, we're very high, I don't, you know, <sighs> My dad told me that when he was younger, he prayed over someone and they healed. So we have a very powerful, um, what's the word? Um, we have very powerful gifts as well. Um, and Nobody was, was there besides Phyllis and the other person, people she was dealing with. And we always get this one-sided story. And in, and now it's coming out that she self sabotaged relationships. And, you know, I don't know. It's possible. But being, this, being what I've went through with men, and if I broke up with you or left you, it was for a reason. Like, it, it, I, I don't understand why women are supposed to or given this this thing where they supposed to like put up with a whole bunch of bullshit it just it don't make sense to me like we're supposed to put up with a, a men and they bullshit and then when we leave when we finally get the strength to leave after being afraid to be alone we finally get the strength to leave they ass is self-sabotage like these was great relationships like one of the relationships she covered in the video this man showed up to one of her performances with flowers and she was talking shit about him and i'm just like he it probably was warranted y'all if y'all watch my videos you see me i talk shit about the exes i've been through i've also apologized for the part that i played and and some of the breakdowns that we had but it wasn't unwarranted like i just saying wake up one day and was like, oh no, I need to, I need to self-sabotage my relationship. Like it, it just don't work like that. 
Um, and so I struggled with that part of her commentary in the video. I don't know if that was her, pers her personal comment. No, I think she was reading a comment made by somebody who was so-called close to her, close to Phyllis. And um, I, it, it, it bothers me that people will say that because, like I said, I don't just wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to decide to self-sabotage my relationship today. Like, no, it don't work like that. So, the man showing up with flowers, if he was this great guy, then why would she be on stage talking crap about him? If, if, if there was nothing going on, if he, if they had this great relationship and everything was, uh, uh um, rainbows and skittles of course every uh, every relationship is not going to be like perfect there are going to be issues and things of that nature because it's two personalities two souls blending together but a lot of the times the men that we pick are jealous of us um they want to be us they cannot i've had men who wanted to be me who wanted to be in my shoes like who who would try on my wigs and it it, it just what are, like what are you doing and am, am i not so and so i'm supposed to stay with somebody who's jealous of me like y'all make it make sense because it don't make sense to me I, i'm not gonna stay with a man who say things like Oh, you're always getting compliments. I want to get compliments. Like, because you're not secure in yourself. Like, a lot of the men we attract are insecure, who, who, who even have the guts to even talk to us. Because men are so intimidated by me that they I rarely get approached. Like, I rarely get approached. And if I get approached, it's by a, a younger guy who just, you know, younger people when they're in their late 20s, early 30s, um, they feel with, with, the, with their ego, you know, so, so they don't, they're the ones, like, lately I've been getting um, approached by younger men that, that have been trying to get my attention, so, it, it, it we, we kind of, like, settle in a sense, settle for the guy who's going to show on the outside that he's loving and he's affectionate and he appears to be everything that you want but behind the scenes he is jealous of you so it's it's always two sides and they always cover the one side and don't look at the possibility of the other side of what was going on in the man's head and and he wasn't secure within his own self and so that allows us as hymen women to the the ones who listen to their intuition and don't ignore it to let them go like i had men that was so into me and loving me and all of that flowers and gaslighting and all like it just it's you don't even that, that you don't even know if it's real love or if they just gaslighting you because you're just so beautiful and it's, so you don't even know what's real like a lot of people in the comments is like just because you're beautiful don't mean that you're gonna have luck in relationships it don't mean that at all it, it's almost like a curse it's a gift and a curse because yes being beautiful might get you your groceries paid for like the little materialistic bullshit that really don't matter at the end of the day like it really don't it really don't like my sister that i'm close with i'm close with two of my sisters but the, the, um one of them is like you know she hates when people comment on how beautiful she is like she don't she don't i might be paraphrasing wrong but she don't like to be complimented on her beauty. She don't like to, for opportunities to be given to her because of her beauty. Me, I don't care. I never really care. I can take a compliment. It doesn't really affect me in no other way. But when it comes to relationships, that's when it gets. That's when I get affected by it. Like I, it, it's 
uh, it, it's so you're so beautiful on daily like all day it's you're so beautiful oh my god you're so gorgeous and this and this and that when i'm in relationships with men and they're constantly doing that it does bother me it does um and i'm not talking about i'm talking about an overabundance of it y'all i'm not talking about oh my man said you're beautiful today it's just all day text messages it's it does it starts to bother me because then it's like I think Karen covered this in, about Phyllis in her video. Like, you don't know whether it's real. You don't know whether the love is real. Or whether they just around you because you're beautiful. And that's the part that, that, that gets to me. That's the part that bothers me. It bothers me to this day. And so, I just wanted to come with you all because I definitely have struggled with the exact same demons that Phyllis has struggled with and in this lifetime as much as I always talk about how I hate earth and all this this is this round is set up for you to learn your lessons so that you can elevate to love to the love vibration the frequency of love whatever you want to call it and it's hard to do that. That's why I'm kind of glad. Like when I got into an accident, I got scars on my face. And it bothered me. But it gave me an imperfection. Like it made me look at myself differently. Like when the doctors asked me if I wanted them to put fillers in my face to get rid of the scars, I said no. Like I, I got scars under my neck from the accident and the scars on my face. And I told them no. I'm just going to leave it as a memory of what I went through. And fast forward to now, five years later after the accident, it allows me to have an imperfection. But it's, men still don't care. <laughs> men still don't care. They just still like it. It's super beautiful. And I, and I get it. And I don't want to do the things that like I seen people in her comments talking about the Marilyn Monroe's and um, I forgot the, the other lady name they mentioned. Um, com I don't even know why these women were in comparison to Phyllis, but th these people in the comments was comparing these white women to Phyllis. But anyway, um, Marilyn Monroe slept with men for, with, for money. <laughs> like, And the other, oh, Anna Nicole, she did the same thing. So, because you're beautiful and you sleep with men with money, you get commercials and you get um, you get on TV, you get into movies. They use their beauty in that way. And I'm not saying it's a, it's a bad thing. That's the path that they chose. I'm not judging or anything like that. That's the path that they chose. And that's fine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not. Phyllis wasn't. It's just not... It's just not in the hymens to be going around sleeping. Like y'all seen my last video, like I'm not sleeping or, 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 or being with no old crusty man for money. Like Anna Nicole did. Like, are we really gonna believe she loved that man like that? Like she acted like, man, please spare me. She loved that money. She loved that lifestyle that he provided for her. And so did Marilyn. Like, they both was poor, let's just call it what it is, they was poor white trash, and they came up using their beauty and their sexuality, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to conform. I already talked about it in my last video. I don't want to conform. I don't want to sleep with men for money. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to build up my own, build up my brand, and hopefully continue to fight these demons that still plague me. Um, is it my fault that men do things to, 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 to sabotage the trust? Like, once you sabotage my trust in you, it's hard to get it back. If I don't believe the words coming out your mouth, it's hard to get it back. Especially if you've been there, done that, said the same shit over and over and over again. I ain't trying to hear it. I'm not trying to hear it. I'm, I'm done with you. 
I'm not going to keep having you gaslight me and keep lying to me. And, and then I'm out here about to go crazy because my intuition is telling me that your ass ain't right. But I'm thinking it's my demons, my paranoia that men have caused. And all, it, like, it, I have, listen, I have PTSD. This is a diagnosis. This is not me just joking. I have anxiety and PTSD because of men. Because of men. And I'm supposed to ignore that. And, 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 and allow men to lie to me and deceive me and get over on me just because I want to be loved by somebody else. I love myself. Don't get me fucked up. I love myself. I love my own time. But I would be lying to myself if I said I didn't want a companion one day. Like, I put that under somebody's short or something. I would be lying to myself. Like, come on. It's like the ultimate expression of love is when the masculine and the feminine comes together appropriately it's it's the ultimate expression of love yes you can cultivate masculine and feminine energy within yourself and love yourself yes but it's nothing like that support from that masculine or that feminine whatever you guys are into just that partner because even if you're in a same-sex relationship one person takes on the masculine side and one person is the feminine side like it's just it's yin and yang like that it, it it is what it is so i would be lying to myself if i said i didn't want a companion to share my life with come on come on i'm not i'm not out here like these like like oh you know just spend the rest of your life alone type shit if that's what i have to do because the men that come into my life deceive me mess up the trust and the bond that we have with each other then it is what it is i'll be another hymen dying not married so on and so forth like it, if that's my destiny then that's what it is but what i what i'm not going to do is allow a man to take me down a spiral of depression heartbreak deception non-trust all of that shit i'm not doing it been there done that and i was more miserable dealing with a man and his bullshit than i am by myself so i'm just it, it is what it is y'all you feel me like i know everything ain't peaches and cream and all of that when it comes to relationships and everything but i'm not going to allow you to violate my trust and deceive me time after time after time again and then you got people on the outside looking in talking about that self-sabotage no i don't want to deal with you and your bullshit i didn't have it all i didn't have the high value men i didn't have the men that don't have as much i didn't have the men who just was just getting them on when to get them on i've had them younger i've had them older i've had them my age i've dated them all and the results is still the same there is literally one person right now that i could think of who did not um and this is most recently um most recently it, it, he withdrew himself away from me he told me that he didn't want to let me down or he didn't want to disappoint me and he withdrew himself and we've talked after that and he gave me his reasons why and I understood it and I told him just like I tell every man that I'm in a relationship with all you have to do is communicate with me I am so oh I'm an open book anything you ask me I'm gonna tell you anything I'm going through you're gonna know I am vulnerable they try to say people don't be vulnerable because of their trauma I'm always vulnerable I put myself out there even the times I, I probably should not have I've done that and I still got the same result and I told him that if he just would have talked to me and let me know like okay this is what I'm going through and I'm da 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 da, da I would have been like okay because it really wasn't even that big of a deal like it really wasn't even that big of a deal but he separated himself from me. And so I respected that. I could not say anything about it. I don't have no hard feelings towards him. None of that. None of that. Because he just felt as though he wasn't ready for me at the time. He had to get things in order. 
And like I said, we talked a couple months later after, you know, after he pulled himself away, he pulled his energy away, pulled himself away. We talked after that. And I told him, like, look, all you had to do was talk to me, bro. Like, that's it. It would have been so simple. And then he apologized. He was very apologetic. You know what I mean? And really wanted to, um, you know, rekindle things. And I told him, you know, we have to build back, build that back. You know what I mean? Because when times get tough, I, it, you you gonna pull away. And so I need to know that you gonna you gonna be in it for the long haul. You feel what I'm saying? If things get tough, or you going through some things that's causing you to 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 get in some turmoil, or whatever the case may be, just talk to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. You feel me? Um, I know I said a lot, but I really need to get this out because I'm using my channel as part of my healing. Me talking to y'all, people that relate, we comment, we conversing in the comments about what we went through and what we're going through. This helps me with my healing. Like, I, <laughs> I want to break this generational curse. Like, I feel like when... Phyllis died in 95, I was 11. And people always used to ask me, was I, am I related to her? And I didn't know until I did my background on Ancestry that we share some relation. We, we look alike, we share some of the same features. Like, and tall women run on my fam, on my father's side. Like all of us, it's like two people that's not tall, but for the most part, the women in my family, we are tall. My sister, younger sister's taller than me. And so we, it, this is a generational curse that I'm trying to break this lifetime because I failed in previous lifetimes. People in my family has, and I feel like when I leave this realm, I keep hitting my throat chakra because I'm trying, I don't want to cry. Um, when I leave this realm, I want this curse to stop with me. I want, I don't want my children to go through it. I don't have any girls, but my sons, I don't want them to go through what I went through. So I love on them as much as I can. I give them the love that I would want for myself. I give myself as much as I can. But is it easy? No, it's not. Like I just had to move and if I had to do mostly everything by myself and it was hard for me because all I kept thinking about was if I had a, a husband or someone around to help me so it's not easy and I couldn't afford to hire people or none of that so I really had to do it on my own and so those moments I also got sick um, I don't know if it was like a, a, a mini stroke or something that happened to my brain earlier this week and I have to go to the doctors next week to see what's going on so it, it's it's me having to do everything on my own it, it, it the stress of it plays out through my body and so it, it it's hard it's hard luckily i'm good um i'm okay and um i'm still moving forward i'm in a position right now where um i have family helping me and so it's going to help make things easier um and take some of the stress off of me um so anyway i was supposed to end this video five minutes ago so yeah, y'all, I hope you enjoy. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. And this is.